head over to losingmymind.com to check out our latest song, Genocide. Support our work. Now onto the show. What do you think about Elon Musk buying Twitter and everything that's happened so far? Well, a sensible person would probably say they're cautiously optimistic. Um, the thing I've been following most closely is uh, his... So I, the, the, um, somebody uh, sent me a Telegram channel that just kind of catalogs all of his activity on Twitter. And I don't so much look at what he tweets because that's obviously, you know, through the lens of, you know, public management, whatever. What's more telling and where I think everybody kind of gives themselves away is in those casual likes that happen at two in the afternoon or two in the morning, you know? And the way he brutally um, handled Kathy Griffin. What I look for when I... Um, when I'm trying to kind of work out what's, what, what's really going on, I try to think, what's making this guy smile? You know, what is bringing this guy uh, happiness, satisfaction, joy? Um, because that I find to be a, a, a reliable indicator of future behavior. So I'm looking at some of the stuff that Musk likes and I'm getting a bit more optimistic. And then, you know, when, when he said, um, she, was she, wasn't, uh, she was impersonated for, uh, she, she was banned for impersonating a comedian. That's funnier than anything <laughs> that Kathy Griffin has <laughs> ever said. It's true. That's funnier than he her whole it. career. Yeah. And this tells me that he takes great personal satisfaction in seeing justice served to those who have been living high on the hog for far too long, abusing and um, uh, insulting uh, the rest of us while not allowing us to respond in kind. And that tells me that he is powerfully motivated to see justice done publicly. So do and, you think and, that and Kathy so Griffin was a good move or a bad move? The, it's the phenomenal. Vanity. It's phenomenal because it, 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 it was, I mean, Elon is the king of vaporware and, um, and, and that's very frustrating. But at the same time, he, he has a sense of theater and spectacle. And it was, it, was, it, 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 was, it was classically intelligent, Elon, because it was just the right demonstration that he meant what he was saying. He put his money where his mouth was. He put one of the most famous comedians in America in the sin bin <laughs> and, then, and then insulted her. Amazing. Um, and forced her to tweet from her dead mother's Twitter account, which the, she then tried to play off as like knowingly ghoulish, but she just looked weird. Yeah. I mean, she, she's now, I mean, she, was, she is a damaged figure anyway. Um, but she is a greatly diminished figure as yeah. a result of this interaction. He, he didn't force she's, her. She decided to do it herself, which is disgusting in itself. She's, well, yeah. the, the mom thing was just kind of like the, the, the um, clown world capstone. The way in which he brought her to heel by being funnier than she has ever been, which is supposed to be her job. I mean, like who would go up against a comedian on Twitter? Anyone, because they're not funny, uh, because they're not allowed to be anymore. Uh, you know, the basis of, of comedy for centuries was laughing about our differences so that yeah. we can realize they're not that serious. Exactly. You know? That's uh, comedy in, in its yeah, essence. Right, because, because when, you, when you point out in an affectionate way um, amusing, manners, uh, amusing ways in which you differ from somebody else has the effect of bringing people closer together, not yep. driving them apart. Um, and a deliberate misunderstanding of this is behind you know, the death of joy that I was talking about. But he chose just the right person who had already um, damaged herself with the Trump head and therefore was difficult to defend um, to demonstrate that he really meant what he said. Yep. And then in a final act of sadism, which I enjoyed, um, he said, I guess if she really wants her account back, she can have it. Meaning, beg. He, beg said, me. he said for $8. For $8, yeah. <laughs> which, which, is, which is great too. You can say what you want about me. That's going to be $8. Yeah. Um, but but he, he basically said to her, I have humiliated you in front of the world. You can come back, but you've got to beg me. Yeah, <laughs> um, that, that, that's what. And, and in doing that, he, in in a sense, was speaking for all of us in that moment. And and we were all kind of like, this is what we've been waiting for. And we got a little glimmer of maybe what we felt in 2016. Yeah. And and, it, but but it was more than that. It was it was putting his money where his mouth was. Right. Uh, not that he hadn't done that already, but I mean, I think he borrowed most of the money for the the, the purchase, but um, and put a lot of debt on the books. But who wouldn't? Uh, it was it was it was him showing us that he meant it. He actually did mean it, and and tell it, and and it was a it was a stand by and stand back or whatever it is. Uh, it was a just hold on, 
I'm going to deal yeah. with this. You made a very important point about comedy healing society. And I think one reason why society is so ravaged is because comedy has been pretty much been made illegal. I remember your, your Patrick Ewan comment. We don't have to get into the specifics of it, but I remember it, it, it just being hilarious. But specifically, if you were given the chance one more time to go back on Twitter, would you take it? And how would you, um, how would you post differently? How would you, uh, would know. you be different or would you be the same? Everybody I know has had a very different uh, trajectory after cancellation to me. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, uh, people are going to know who I'm talking about and some of them are friends and some of them used to be friends, but I've just seen people um, become just destroyed. I've seen people wreck themselves through this like uh, um, uh, hysterical kind of manufactured grief about a Twitter account. It was never that serious. It was never that important to me. It was just one medium through which I enjoyed amusing people. But for some people, it was kind of all they had. Um, and many of those people have been wrecked by this. They're not the same people they were in 2015. Um, and and I, I saw some of my friends, people I'd previously admired, <sighs> doing this kind of you know pathetic clamoring for some glimmer of form or relevance, uh, trying you know doing anything at all costs to stay in the headlines occasionally. And I, I, frankly, I felt that it was it was squalid and 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 decrepit and beneath me, and um, I was absolutely not interested in lowering myself to that. Uh, so you know, I, I I think I've I think I've emerged from it the most um, psychologically uh, intact because everybody I know is, is was driven crazy by it. You know that um, in, uh, in 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 ancient Rome, um, when an emperor was especially bad. Um, they would do something that was later called uh, damnatio memoriae. So um, when the emperor died, they would chip his name off buildings and smash his busts um, uh, with the goal of, of erasing him from history. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea was that you know nobody would be able to tell in future because yeah. in, in Europe, we in, in Western civilization, we used to think in terms of, of, of civilization and of, of legacy. legacy. legacy yeah. When 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 yeah when when uh, when the patriarchy was intact, we we. We th we thought more about that kind of thing, yeah. Um, and and so th the Romans were very concerned about how um, th they would be viewed in in future. So when somebody was especially cruel or wicked or crazy, um, they they went to great lengths to erase them from history. There's something oddly more more sadistic and uh, wretched is happening now because people are alive to see their own erasure, and that's new in history. I, I, there's, there's no there's no there's no real. Um, close equivalent to that they used to yeah. have banishment well that, yeah sure but but you know you can go and you can make a new life but to be but to be forcibly uh installed on the sidelines watching as your name and your like and your work and your reputation is destroyed and dismantled and um urinated on uh that's something that not even the most sadistic and insane roman emperor suffered and I can understand why a lot of people find it traumatic. Um, perhaps I, I had a bit more of a healthy attitude to all that in the first place, so I didn't kind of feel a existential loss of like, it's a Twitter account. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna still have my house, still have my health. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 it didn't, it didn't, you know, it didn't, you know, make me wake up in a cold sweat thinking I've lost everything, um, as it did to some other people, yeah. because I, I think I maybe had it a bit of a better appreciation of what it represented and what it didn't but but i understand why they're why they're traumatized you know um it's been very it's been very upsetting i personally would do nothing different at all will you um, come back on the platform i sorry that was your question i don't know um i feel like i mean i i kind of like sort of define that era and and me coming back is going to be like a well there's only the, all roads lead to some kind of um uh some kind of um disappointing tribute act to past glories you know and I, I don't really believe in 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 you know kind of trying to resurrect uh past successes uh i'm happy that they happened in a, and, and and all the rest of it but i'm not i'm not somebody that can live that way so i if i do it will probably be in a very different format and a very different style um i i i it's a battlefield that I comprehensively conquered, um, and I don't feel the need to revisit it because I beat it. Uh, I beat it so much that you know <laughs> they had to institute um, you know the regime that followed. They had a hashtag. Uh, I can't say the word. They had to make rules because of you. 
They did. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it set the trajectory for the, for the failure of the company, you know. Um, and that's something I regard with, uh, you know, um, nostalgia and satisfaction. And I, revisiting it would be to fall prey to um, uh, a, a, a sort of debilitating um, temptation to live in the past. I found let me, let me, let me, Rob, so, you're sorry. sorry I want to act in the present. Milo, I want to ask you this question because you, t- you talked about legacy and the Roman emperors. I'm wondering if you think the loss of that in modern civilization that we that many people no longer care about their legacy and their history is a defining factor in why things are the way they are falling becoming yes. darker yes it's a product of women's suffrage um the kinds of people who were plausible candidates for office changed when um the voting base broadened and it's, i don't think it's controversial to say that the sexes are different and have different uh, priorities and different uh, preoccupations and different ways of approaching the question, who do I want? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.